You have heard me talk about the auditor's office before. <clears throat> Well, I know, but that doesn't mean you have a slippage in your, in your membership. Yeah, well, you need a remedial course, Cameron, because you keep uh, talking about auditing books. I am going to fly through this presentation, um, and I think that other times that I've been here, we've talked about just in general what the auditor's office does, the diversity of the job, and then uh, we went through a ballot processing exercise, right, where we actually opened up ballots and got into very uh, detailed steps about how we process votes. Um, this time, what I'd like to do is um, refresh your memory about what the auditor's office does and our responsibilities by looking retrospectively at just some <coughs> news items, some things that were important to us to happen last year. I'm gonna speed through this program and get right to questions because that's when the action really starts happening. Cameron. Hang on, hang on. Four major lines of business, uh, elections, reporting, licensing, and animal control. Um, I'll be talking a bit about animal control. So in, uh, in the field of elections, just to give you an idea of the scope, um, we have 400 and between 430,000 and 450,000 registered voters in Pierce County. I, and I would like you to just guess how many uh, elected officials are elected on the Pierce County ballot. There's, there's a prize for whoever gets closest. This is a pocket constitution. Multiple choice? Uh, no, there's no count off. 12. 35, 12. 120. It's 120. 204. 67. Okay. Um, 511. Wow. 511. That's because we have 114 jurisdictions. Think about it. Every water district, <coughs> drainage and dike districts, I bet you didn't even know we had those. Um, every single city and town council. Um, think about all of the things that appear, school districts, think about all of the things that appear, and then think about how many school districts we have. By the way, how many school districts do we have in Pierce County? 15. Uh, interesting conversation starter. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we just had an election where uh, 13 out of the 15 uh, school districts in Pierce County um, appeared on the ballot. So we have over 500 precincts as well, and we manage that elections division with just 13 full-time staff. But of course, during an election, when we've got all of those ballots coming in, we don't manage it just with 13 staff. We have up to 250 extra hires. During the presidential election, we had 450 extra hires. So we are a huge, not only are we a post office, but we're also an HR and personnel company. Um, so some of the things that happened in uh, the rear view mirror. <clears throat> One of my favorite things is we've brought back the citizenship celebration to Pierce County. Until three years ago, folks that became, um, who were naturalized citizens who took their oath of citizenship needed to travel up to Seattle um, to become citizens. Um, and now they get to do that. We have a partnership with uh, Immigration and Naturalization Services and they get to have their citizenship celebration right here in Mount Tahoma High School. It's free to the public. We could always use volunteers and uh, it's one of the most moving things that we sponsor in our office. We have, um, just last year, we had 23 countries represented, ranging from American Samoa to Vietnam, but in prior years, we've had as many as 70 countries represented. Most moving part of this is whenever um, the officiant asks each country to stand, and then to see the whole auditorium fill when they call out anywhere from 30 to 70 different countries. And it's just jubilant. Every year we have active duty military um, become citizens. 
Another uh, project that unfortunately we won't be repeating in the near future because of budget cuts was Project Citizen. We ended up uh, reaching out and uh, I think we served about 250 middle school kids. And this is a civic education class in cooperation with uh, public schools where um, uniquely we teach kids about the connection between local government, state government, and federal government. And they have to learn to identify a civic problem that's real and touches their life. They have to identify the problem, identify the unit of government that's responsible or has responsibility for the problem. They have to identify what the public policy issue is as opposed to the um, maybe the community issue. For example, there's a raging debate in our community right now about um, the TNT and um, advertising uh, with the orange bags. And uh, those kids would do a great job of attacking that problem and identifying whether it is this a public policy issue or is this a community issue. <clears throat> Once they've identified issues, they have to do research and identify proposed policy solutions and then they have to debate those. This is kind of like a science fair for, um, for civics. We've actually had two of the projects in the three years that we did this, two of the projects were adopted by the Pierce County Council uh, because the kids identified a pressing issue. Um, one was roadside uh, dumping and how it was impacting their community and they had a fee structure solution that the county council is looking at to try and reduce the amount of roadside trash. Another solution that the county council adopted were uh, kids impacted by fatalities at Lake Taps. Too many of their friends were dying um, by drowning and they discovered after research that it was because of the um, temperature in the lake and people underestimating how cold it was in the center of the lake and then becoming overwhelmed by the temperatures. <clears throat> They thought that a good public policy solution was to work with Pierce County Parks and to actually put a digital, uh, a, an LED thermometer reader at the boat launch so before you get in the water, you can know what the temperature is out in the middle of the lake. They also put up a memorial to the people who have passed away in the lake. There's Dan Roach judging one of the competitions. One of the things we do really well in local government and in the auditor's office in particular is we, do we just roll with changes. <laughs> and uh, budgets are getting tighter. You may have noticed that uh, we've stopped uh, putting I voted stickers in our voters pamphlets. But that, sh that saved us $20,000 for every election. And we have four elections a year. Uh, so that just needed to go. Um, we invented a digital sticker for those of you that are active in social media. It's fun, it's not as widely used as the sticker, but um, it's free. And I think that really is the point. Here it is. This is how it looks when it's applied. We also implemented uh, equal marriage this year. <coughs> um, so this, these are the new couples that are walking into our office. And um, from a kind of a bureaucratic point of view, it really was a challenge for us, uh, 39 counties with the Department of Health, to come to agreement about what new forms would look like. Because think about it, marriage license applications and certificates are part of a very important public record. Not only are they legal documents, but they are um, also uh, an important part of genealogy and history. So what are those documents going to look like? Uh, respecting that uh, any any uh, combination of gender can get married and how are we going to implement that. But it went pretty smoothly. In pet licensing, we've gotten pretty creative. Uh, we have a lot of different jurisdictions that do animal control. If you live in Lakewood, oh, that's right, they're building a new museum. If you live in Lakewood, you have Lakewood um, animal control, but if you live in Puyallup, who do you call? <coughs> well, you call Metro animal control, would you know that? <laughs> if you, who do you call in Sumner? Who do you call in the city of Tacoma? Who do you call in Pierce County? Well, pretty much everybody calls the Humane Society by default, and they don't do pet licensing or animal control. I've put some magnets on your table to advertise um, a site that we created in collaboration with all the different jurisdictions that do pet licensing um, and animal control. 
this rests on top of um, the uh, GIS layer that we have in Pierce County. So this is the same uh, system that you would use to enter in your address or your parcel number and find out what your property t uh, taxes are and what your home valuation is, some of those land records. We used that powerful search engine and that database. And um, so that's the same one that you're going to use to enter your address there. And it will immediately connect you with how to license your pet online and what the proper authority is for animal control in your jurisdiction so you don't have to guess anymore. Um, that's something that was very, very low cost. Matter of fact, practically free. And it is getting used a lot. Um, and it means that if the folks are using this online portal, it means that they're already connected to the internet at home. So we connect them directly um, to the online licensing portal for each one of those jurisdictions. So it's one-stop shopping, just a couple of clicks, and you can actually start licensing your pet and paying for that license online. Or if you have an animal control problem, it connects you directly with the proper animal control agency. My vote is new since the last time that I uh, spoke with you. Uh, this is a uh, kind of a custom portal for your voter's registration records. Um, you can log on from a desktop or you can use one of our mobile apps. So this is going to work with uh, any one of your smartphones, your iPad, um, or like I said, your desktop. And you can find out what your voter <coughs> registration history is. What, is. what do you think is included in that? Just whether you voted or not, I would assume. Uh, yeah, good distinction. It's not how you voted, but it's what elections that you were eligible to vote in that you voted in. It also uh, has your birth date, your mailing address, um, and it also uh, is going to have uh, information about the current election in your ballot. For those people who have been nervous about vote by mail and are never quite trusting of their federal postal workers, which there's no reason to not be, um, and you're worried whether we've received your ballot, through my vote you can actually look and see when, what date we received your ballot on and when we counted it. You can also see if there's any kind of a problem if your ballot has been flagged or challenged for the lack of a signature or the wrong signature. Um, and you'll remember from previous presentations that if that ever happens, we write you, we call you, and you have time to cure it. But this is a quick way for you to see those kinds of messages. It's also going to directly link you to your elected officials. In the same way that people are confused about what pet licensing agency to call, typically, even great civically engaged people like yourself don't carry around your voter ID card. And when you're reading something in the paper or when you've uh, driven over that flipping pothole for the 50th time and you just want to reach the elected official uh, that represents you on that issue, it's, you, you end up having to do a lot of research because most people don't have their districts memorized. This does the work for you. So when you log on to my vote and you want to see who your elected officials are, you're connected with the proper school district with uh, whatever council member uh, represents your district if you have district elections. Um, utility boards, not elected officials, but uh, Congress, state legislature, you just don't even have to think about it. And uh, we've got hot links, so while you're um, upset, you can actually hit that email link and take care of business. Or maybe it's a compliment you want to pass on. Who knows? Uh, this site will also give you turn-by-turn -turn directions to any voting center or ballot drop box. Uh, by the August primary, we'll have 30 ballot drop boxes in Pierce County, more than any other county in Washington State, and uh, certainly the largest by capita, per capita. <coughs> um, if you are out running errands and you want to know the closest place to deposit your ballot, this will give you um, Google Maps turn-by-turn -turn directions from wherever you happen to be to the closest voting center or drop box. Does anybody know what a voting center is? Uh, no, but I have a question. Sure. <laughs> so how are you publicizing this? I mean, this is really cool. Uh, it's the first time I've heard about it. So other than talking to Rotary Club, what are you doing to get the word out? Well, uh, so I, I've, I've definitely tried to get the TNT engaged in it. We've done a couple of pieces on public television, PCTV. And um, we've certainly tried to push this out on, on our own website and Rotary Talks. But 
Um, and we've tried to get uh, people to adopt it in social media and advertise it that way, but it's, it's hard. It's not very sexy. <laughs> And if you have any ideas, please see me afterwards. But it's really hard to get the media interested in this because everybody's got a new app um, all, all the time. Wasn't it in the ballot? Um, well, we certainly, so in the voters pamphlet, we have a whole page on this and step-by-step -step directions about how to download the app. Um, and we're going to, that'll be in every voters pamphlet. Um, so anytime you need that. So uh, the um, so the ballot drop boxes are an alternative to the post office, and you're right, it is vote by mail. But a surprising number of people want to cut out the middleman and are concerned about uh, in putting their ballot uh, in the mail stream. Um, there are other people who um, just fundamentally are opposed to paying 44 cents to transmit their. Dropbox, so they will spend 44 cents driving to a ballot drop box um, instead of using a stamp. So it's just an alternative. And uh, the drop box and the uh, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, also, ballot drop boxes uh, through the Federal Help America Vote Act um, and the Secretary of State's office uh, was an important alternative for people living with disabilities too. I and. Drop boxes are open 18, so the day you get your ballot, all the way up until 8 p.m. on election day, those ballot drop boxes are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So they're also slightly more convenient than the <coughs> post system. If you were looking at this on your smartphone, this is what it would look like. In business licensing, um, one of the things that we have been working on is uh, streamlining the business code in Pierce County. So state law provides most of the authority for licensing and regulating businesses to towns, to cities and towns, not to counties, which is why there aren't many county licensing programs. But chartered counties like um, Pierce County can make business uh, licensing regulations. Well, over time, it became like barnacles on a ship. It was, uh, Pierce County's code was completely encrusted with what I thought uh, were um, arbitrary and unhelpful regulations that weren't equally enforced. So we've eliminated 28 different types of business licenses in Pierce County and uh, added none. So uh, one of the things that uh, we eliminated everything from, there was a crazy rule that you had to get a license to have a yard sale in Pierce County of any duration. Uh, I bet you that you did not think you needed to visit me in the auditor's office to do that. Uh, we had other um, business licensing standards such as uh, pinball and pool tables. If you want, had a, a restaurant or a cafe or a bar in Pierce County and you wanted to have a pinball machine or a pool table, did you know that you needed an establishment license, a distributor license, and a placement license? <laughs> you would not think of coming to the auditor's office for that. Did you know that I uh, licensed circuses? <laughs> True, and carnivals and pony rides. So those are some of the sillier things that we eliminated, but um, I was really, I was really pleased to be able to do that. Now we're only regulating and licensing things where there's a, you know, compelling government interest or a public safety issue, uh, such as adult entertainment. So one of the interesting um, parts of my job is going to inspect the establishments and dancers at. Um, we only have one strip club left in unincorporated Pierce County. Lakewood has its own problems. But this is Dream Girls and Foxes. And we have about 100 dancers. And um, I, we recently uh, increased the regulation here, not uh, to try to tamp down on the activity. That's a protected um, free speech and um, expression. Uh, and I also don't uh, personally like doing business licensing that's driven by in, you know, individual or subjective morality. But one of the things that was happening is this particular club had a history of legal violations that the sheriff's department would investigate and take arrests for. And what, was, what we were noticing is that the dancers, all of the code put all the penalties on the dancers. So if there was um, illegal touching or fondling or anything like that, and they were, they were breaking any of the rules, 
then the dancers would get fired and lose their license and have the infractions. Um, we changed the code so that everybody on site became responsible, including the managers. Because what was happening is the managers could turn a blind eye, have the dancers um, do what customers wanted, which was illegal, and the managers wouldn't get punished, but the dancers would. And they are contractors, by the way, not employees. So we changed the code to make everybody on site responsible for the behavior that was happening in the establishment. We recently turned over licensing uh, of taxis and taxi cabs to the city of Tacoma. Um, there was a tremendous duplication of effort. You can see that um, the majority, 52% of the cabs and cab drivers in Pierce County had to go to the city of Tacoma to get a license and Pierce County to get a license. We needed to badly increase the standards in our cab uh, business licensing and when we were doing research about how to increase uh, standards, it's ridiculous, for example, that um, some of my clerks who process passports and marriage licenses would be expected to go out and do vehicle inspections on cabs, which they were. They don't have the expertise to do that, we don't have the time to do that, and it really is going through the motions at great public expense. So um, in the end, when I found out about this information, we just decided to stop licensing taxis in Pierce County. Now all of it is done in the city of Tacoma with much higher standards, but they get to drive and actually conduct business in Pierce County. Does that make sense? <coughs> There's a lot of drains on our time. We spent a lot of time in 2013 with um, people in jail um, making public records requests. And this was where um, the Public Records Act, felons, and uh, my exotic dancers all got mixed up in one story, which happens more frequently than you would think. <coughs> we had somebody serving time who was intensely interested in getting uh, color photographs of every one of the dancers we license. Kind of like a driver's license agency, we take pictures of them. And they also have to um, do uh, fill out a very sensitive application that talks about tattoo placement and birthmarks, et cetera, which is important for the undercover officers that go in there to be able to identify the right dancers. Uh, this person wanted to see all of that information. Um, and one of the things that I get to do is use my discretion about that. I'm a big fan of the Public Records Act. Um, it doesn't bother me that felons get to make requests for records. There's some important reasons why they should be able to, but I was very concerned about the safety of the dancers. Um, so we ended up doing third-party notifications to each of them, and they ended up getting an injunction. So, and this is a different uh, felon who made a records request. He wanted, um, to see our record of all of the public records requests that we get. And by the way, we get between 250 and 300 a year just in my office. And so we have a tracking tool to make sure that um, we're responding to your requests in a timely manner that they're fulfilled. And that includes your name and the mailing address. He wanted a record of all of that for the past year, which meant that I needed to do third party notifications to everybody in Pierce County who had made a public records request to let them know that a, a felon had wanted that information that I couldn't shield it. Another time waster is one candidate primaries, and I'm not picking on JT Wilcox, but he just happened uh, to most recently have an uncontested primary. How many people find this confusing? So in partisan races, uh, like so all of our legislators are pr partisan, um, lucky J.T. Wilcox doesn't have an opponent. So you get he will appear by himself in the primary, and then he's going to appear by himself again in the general, so you get to vote for him twice. This is not free, and as Pierce County's ballots get bigger and bigger, more congested, uh, it actually puts us at risk of um, going into a two-card ballot. Um, so we've been working hard with other auditors to try to get that rule changed and have them treated like nonpartisan primaries, where if you don't have three or more people, then you don't have a runoff, you just appear in the general election. Uh, that had a big consequence in Chelan County. They ended up mailing out ballots this year where there was just one person running for one office in the primary election. They had to mail ballots to every one of their citizens with just one race on the ballot and just one name to choose from. 
tax advisory votes, uh, we got a lot of calls in our office about these. They started appearing in 2012, but I think people really started noticing in 2013. These are these odd, um, uh, issues that um, any time the state legislature um, takes an action that has some sort of a tax consequence, lowering, repealing, uh, you name it, any time they move or do something to a tax or create a tax, you get to vote on it, but your vote has no effect. It's advisory only, um, and it, it really, I guess it has no meaning other than data. Um, and unlike other issues and initiatives and measures that have a um, have certain standards for how we describe the issue, this one does not. So we have we've had like four and six advisory votes on ballots in 2013 with the Boeing incentive package. I'm still trying to get a legal opinion about how many issues because you can't you have to break out every single tax change. So if there's gonna be a transportation revenue package, for example, or the uh, Boeing incentive package that just came up, um, we're not sure how many of these advisory votes are gonna appear in the next ballot. But again, the consequence is that we could get into a two uh, ballot syndrome uh, situation. And uh, voters are extremely confused about um, what they just voted on and why. And we're doing some analysis to see if there's actual drop off. Um, I'm, I'm going to skip <laughs> over the sovereign citizen movement. Um, it just, <laughs> it is a, a subculture that um, probably the judge knows about um, and takes an incredible amount of our time, but I'm not going to go. So, some good news. Um, so, you can see that our voter turnout has actually increased as predicted. Um, since we've implemented vote by mail. We didn't think it was gonna be a large increase, uh, maybe three to five percent, and that's exactly what we got. But so for that extra convenience, um, we got a small increase in turnout. Those are our um, rankings among other counties. Large scale animal seizures have definitely been a big part of the last three years. In 2013, we uh, confiscated 53 horses. Um, and we finally got closure to our largest seizure that happened in September of 2012 when we seized 39 horses from one site. We finally got justice in November of 2013. Um, these animals, uh, we don't have a humane society for horses or goats. In the last month, we've seized horses, goats, we busted a um, cockfighting operation and ended up with 20 fowl. Um, we have, um, oh, we just confiscated 19 alpacas and found 27 alpaca carcasses. Um, and we uh, took 16 pigs off of a farm and found seven carcasses out there. So we do it all, but it's there's no Humane Society partner for these uh, livestock and large animal cases. So we ended up we end up having to do all the boarding and medical care. Where do you do all that? Do you have we have contracted facilities. <clears throat> so we go, we do an RFQ every three years and look for veterinary hospitals, stables, et cetera, that have experience. Uh, we don't have anybody that'll take emus and ostriches, so I hope we don't confiscate any of those anytime soon. Um, so that's the pig farm that we talked about. That, the, and we ended up having to euthanize all of the pigs. Um, so hoarders are also a very large part of animal control, and we are often the pointy end of the stick um, because we'll get called out for loose or roaming animals. Um, observe enough um, evidence just with an officer going out to knock and talk, and then we end up getting a warrant and we'll walk in and find this. So in addition to animals, we find children, and then we start calling in partners, Pierce County Cares, uh, DSHS, um, numerous other agencies. And we're out of, I think we're out of time. Yeah, good. So we have questions. This is when it gets better. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you see online voting happening anytime soon? 
Currently, for our military and out-of-state voters, I can email you a ballot image. You can print it out, sign it, mark it, and scan it back to me. I eventually have to get that wet signature back from you in order to count the ballot, but that's as far as it goes right now. Um, but that's a great convenience for our military voters. I don't think that the feds um, are uh, going to uh, enable uh, or fund online voting in, in my career. Um, but it's definitely where the world is going. We have online voter registration, 80% of, but, but we're one of only 14 states in the nation that have any, any form of online voter registration, and we were an early adopter. 80% of the people that registered to vote now register to vote online. Um, but I think that balloting, I think that the next step is going to be using iPads to mark ballots. But until we um, are able to create an online authentication system that the public trusts, we're going to be relying on wet signatures. So I don't, I don't, I think eventually, but um, I, I'll be out of office by then. Yes? Quick statement and question to Lance. I think there's a drop box of candle not far from the round table pizza in the north end. <laughs> and the question, what percentage use a drop box versus candle? 52% uh, of our customers use a drop box instead of the postal service. So we are becoming the post office. Um, we, Pierce County is one of the only counties in Washington State that actually assembles. We do everything but the printing. But when it comes to assembling ballot packages and mailing them outbound to you, that's us. And now we're on the, in the return game. Well, yeah. Are yes. any of them broken into every time I put my ballot in there? It looks kind of flimsy and there's a big thing you can stick your hand. I mean, no, I, that must be some utility bill <laughs> box because our, <laughs> our, our boxes are tight. <laughs> So uh, I'll give you some information, um, and uh, I'm not trying to, we, we, have, we have tried to hooliganize our drop boxes. Um, so they're made from quarter inch folded steel. They are mounted in a foot of concrete. Uh, any vehicle that tries to pull that out or run that over, they're gonna get the bad end of the deal, not the ballot drop box. <laughs> The slots are specifically made so you can only put one ballot in at a time uh, to minimize the amount of other stuff that might go in. We recently um, worked with uh, Pierce, uh, Pierce Fire and Rescue, and we actually we wanted to see what would happen if we tried to um, uh, throw a match inside with ballots. And so we did that testing, and we actually have fire suppressant technology on the inside, again, the only county that does that, and it works really well. We even squirted lighter fluid in that sucker. Uh, no, the firemen did, the firemen did. And um, so we tested all sorts of flammables, all sorts of situations, and the worst case scenario is we had three ballots that were singed, but still readable. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is true or not, but, but first of all, Pierce County Pets, they don't do any of the spay or neutering of the animals. That's the Humane Society, right? Um, there are lots of resources for spay and neuter, but Humane Society would be a great place to go. Okay. Um, and the other thing is I've heard, I don't know if it's rumors or just talk around the neighborhood, that uh, Pierce County or the Humane Society comes in and they'll take stray cats, spay them, and then put them right back where they were so that they keep down the rodent population but they don't actually propagate. Mm. Well, that, that is an experiment that's managed. It, no, that's not, that's not Pierce County Animal Control. Okay. We, we, can't, um, we can't break the laws that we uphold. So loose and roaming animal is a loose and roaming animal. Cats need to be licensed and they need to be tagged and they can't be roaming. Um, but the Humane Society does have a, um, a feral cat colony program where the wild cats that come in groups of about 20, uh, they will use volunteers to trap them and then bring them in, inoculate them, spay them, and then tip their ear 
um, so that they can be identified as being inoculated in spade. And then they do re-release them to that colony to live out their life. Um, doing that counterintuitively actually keeps the colony at a manageable size rather than growing. Uh -huh. um, and then they age out and, and, and die and then the colony isn't replaced because they've been spayed. So we're aware of that program. We think it's a great idea, but the laws haven't changed to allow us to participate. Yeah. Well, I have a comment first on, I bet you the annex quite a bit lately doing a vehicle licensing. The people have been, been very friendly and cooperative, so I wanted to give you Thank kudos you. for that. Thank you. Uh, and then a question, it seems like it must be difficult to me to check legal voter registration to make sure that a voter is meeting all of the qualifications for citizenship and mm -hmm non-felony and those kinds of things. Is that a difficult process? No, it's a careful process. And by the way, we um, have over a million vehicle vessel transactions in Pierce County every year. So it's a very busy division. I'm glad you're getting good service. Um, <clears throat> so we have a statewide voter <coughs> registration database that is co-managed by the Secretary of State and individual auditors. And I like that system of co-management. Um, three times a year, no, four times a year, that database is checked against death records from the Department of Health, death records from Social Security benefits, um, and the Department of Corrections roster for people who are in custody. Um, so that's how we purge, purge is not a good word, sorry. Um, that is how we um, challenge and isolate voter registrations of people who are incarcerated for felonies and people who may have died. Other than that, uh, voter registration actually has very few qualifications. And Washington State does not require proof of citizenship to register to vote. Um, and there, there's a raging debate nationwide that's being played out in state legislatures all over the country. So whenever you go to get your driver's license, the Federal Motor Voter Act, um, and that's one of the most frequent ways people will register to vote. Uh, when you get your driver's license, you're not asked for proof of citizenship. You are asked for documents that would prove your residency, but not your U.S. citizenship. Notice next time that you sign your ballot, and we will not open your ballot if it's not signed, read that oath. The oath um, reiterates that you have to be a U.S. citizen to be voting and to submit this ballot. And if you don't, it's subject to a $10,000 fine and it's a class A felony. <coughs> and if you think somebody shouldn't be voting, uh, you can call me, you can call Mark Lindquist, you can, you can call any authority, Secretary of State's office. One last short question. Yeah. It seems that there's a lot of single issue special elections that occur, and sometimes you're just a few months after a general election. And I always wonder why those can't be put on the general ballot you know, earlier, rather than incurring the cost of doing those special elections. And then it seems that the voter participation is really low on those issues. We just wanted to understand why that happens. Sure, so state law sets out when um, certain elections occur. And right now in Washington state, we have no more than four elections a year, unless it's a drainage dike district, different presentation. Um, <clears throat> And some of those special some of those special elections, for example, I, I think that Metro Parks um, may be contemplating being on the ballot. We haven't received the resolution yet in April. So you may ask, and that they, they may be the only jurisdiction that is on the ballot in April, and so you may be asking why. Um, they have the right to do that. That's set out in state law. Uh, they could jump on to the primary ballot in August or the general um, election in November. They could jump on and do that. And then they'd be splitting or sharing the costs with other jurisdictions. But there's also a, a bit of a strategy to school districts and special purpose districts having their own special election or small one. In some cases, small turnout actually gets a better result. And it's, worth, and it's worth it to them strategically to have it be alone or have it be on a very small um, special election ballot. In the last election, where we mailed ballots to 83% of Pierce County residents, we only had a 29% turnout. Um, but every single issue won.
Thank you. You guys have been really patient with me. It's, it's a challenge making this exciting and interesting. So <laughs>